This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and bienvenido to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm Richard Concepcion. Today's guest is Carmen Bell. He is a social media consultant and the owner of MLA Hawaii. She's here to help us to understand the good, the bad, and how to protect our children from social media. Carmen, bienvenida al programa. Welcome Aloha. to the program. Aloha, Richard. Thank you for having me. All right, it's good to have you here. Uh, let's start the program by asking you to tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do for the community, and uh, why you become a social media consultant. Oh, absolutely. Um, about four years ago, I decided to leave the finance sector and uh, branch over to the marketing consultant or social media marketing consulting. Um, after working with several nonprofit organizations here locally, um, I was able to learn a lot about how to marry a lot of the social media and the different platforms available with a lot of the local businesses and also nonprofit organizations. Um, I was fortunate enough to work with several that um, deal with a lot of issues here locally. Um, and I was able to also help them uh, branch out and ex give a lot of exposure to their brand. So you also help uh, an organization with Latin Connection and Hawaii Latino Field Festival? Absolutely, yes. Um, I, being Latina, um, in retiring here in Hawaii, I really wanted to give back to my community, not only the Hawaii community, but also the Latino community here in Hawaii. So it was very important for me to work with a lot of these organizations um, and helping them in any way that I could, um, especially with what I'm good at, which is through the social media and helping them with their brand. Well, we have a lot of questions for you. And before we start, I so know <laughs> those questions. Uh, when I go over the internet, uh, you know, safety, and I uh, want to learn about a little bit about the data that we have out there. We have a, here uh, a presentation that talk about different data. Uh, we had 90% of the teens have used some form of social media. 75% have a profile on social networking site. More than half of the American teens visit social networking sites every day. 17% of the teens say they have been contacted online by someone that they didn't know in a way that they made them feel scared or uncomfortable. Also, 30% all the teens say they receive online advertisement that was inappropriate for their age, and 39% of the teens admitted to lying about their age to gain access to the website. So with that information, can you tell me a little bit what is good and bad about social media? Oh, absolutely, it is very important. Um, with social media, it is such a wonderful resource not only for um, a brand or a company, but also for their users. Um, so many people today, they are able to have an unlimited amount of exposure through social media. Um, and being able to do it and do it in a very responsible way, um, they can, it can result very profitable for their business. Um, and it can give them an exposure that they wouldn't be able to just have locally. Um, however, um, there's a downside to that. It's is always right. It's also the exposure. Correct. Um, just, you know, not be, being able to just put so much information out there in the social media and um, in, as well as the people that you are, have part, as part of your brand. Um, a lot of brands today, um, they have children. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of promotions for the children. There's a lot of organizations that children are a part of. So as a brand, as a company, as an organization, it's your responsibility to make sure that they are protected. Um, because Not only because they're part of the brand, but because they're minors. Um, so it is, it is important to use these resources responsibly. I think it's one of the children, you know, benefit by, you know, able to keep in contact with families and friends. And then also, you know, they can share ideas and uh, you use their creativity. But what is really bad about social media? Um, to start off, there's a lot of uh, potential for cyberbullying um, in social media, as well as predators or, you know, people that are, you know, um, contacting your children, especially minors. So it is very important to keep that in mind, especially if you are trying to use social media as an exposure for your child. If you want your child to be into modeling, if you want your kid to be into acting, 
it is wonderful. It's a wonderful tool to use. However, um, it could really um, be dangerous because you're putting a lot of the information about your, your, your child or a child that you represent onto the World Wide Web. And it, it, it could be a little scary. So um, I guess my best advice is just, you know, just be careful. Make sure that you're reading and you're um, doing the, your due diligence to make sure that their information is protected and they are protected online. You mentioned about uh, cyberbullying. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Um, cyberbullying is pretty much bullying on the internet. Um, it could happen through um, social media. Um, it can happen, um, you know, just comments. Kids can read, you know, very negative comments. Um, anyone, anyone has access to your child when they have a profile online. So, um, you know, cyberbullying, I mean, any, anyone can come and just, you know, make them feel uncomfortable. Um, maybe perhaps there's some stalking, you know, for teens. It, it could be really scary, if, if not monitored. Wow, that's difficult. Uh, let, let's talk about a little bit about the internet safety and laws. Uh, we have here um, different information. The first thing I want to talk about is what is COPA, is Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. It protects kids younger than 13 years old when they engage in online activities. Also, children personal information without the parent knowing or permission, they cannot sign in or get uh, the, the ability to use the internet or be part of the social media. Uh, also, parents need to provide the consent. And uh, this consent is just not verbally need to be uh, written. And also, uh, the, the different company that provide social media uh, they cannot collect more information where they require. So going over the internet safety law, uh, what else can a parent do to protect their children? Um, I absolutely. There's uh, many platforms uh, such as Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. They have a lot of privacy policies and safety policies in place. Um, that you can read them looking through your settings through of each of each of them, um, one of them, for example, let's say play, uh, Facebook. Um, Facebook has a lot of private policies where you could either disclose the information to the public, you could keep it private to the friends that you have, um, you could keep it uh, private to the followers that you have. There's there's different links where you can have friends where you could share a little more information with them, and you can share different kind of information with your followers. Um, other um, platforms such as Twitter, um, they have. Uh, uh, policies in place where you can report anyone that you feel is being is harassing you or it's or they don't necessarily need to be doing it to you if you feel someone is making comments that can be a little bit um, discriminating or uh, you know it's not making people feel comfortable you can always report them and then they will go ahead and, and do an investigation and perhaps this person's account will be either suspended temporarily or permanently um, you know, it's, it's, it's really important to you just kind of go back to the settings of all these different flat platforms and see what um, policies they have in place that you can use to protect yourself and the account of, you know, of your, of your child if, if, you, if you have a child who has an account. And it's also very important for the parents to get involved. Um, talking to one of my viewers, uh, wrote an email and she mentioned it that, you know, her eight years old was trying to type Lego. and. She misspelled and it came out with leg. Yeah. And so many different websites that is pretended to a leg and also pornographic material. Mm -hmm. uh, how can a parents uh, prevent the, this kind of uh, you know situation at home? Um, well, for for starters, um, as far as computers and what your children are able to access online, you can always you know do the settings on your own personal computer at home and make sure that the kids don't have access to certain sites or don't have access to certain um, uh, social media platforms or pages. Um, something else that you can do to protect your children is kind of, you know, talk to them. Talk to them about the different things. If you see something like this, click out. Don't click on if someone, you know, if something pops up, don't click on it. Even if it says, hey, you can see you know, this cartoon for free, don't click on that. You know, just kind of talk to your kids a little bit, educate them about the different things that could happen online, um, or to come and find you, and then you would tell them, hey, that looks fun, click on that. Um, you know, I mean, that's just, just to name a few. 
you know. Oh, that's a lot for a parent. That's a lot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's talk about what is sexting. Well, sexting is um, pretty much just um, sending any pornographic pictures uh, to through a mobile device. However, through your mobile device nowadays, I mean, you have access to the internet. You have access to Facebook and Instagram and all these different uh, social media. So it's, it could be dangerous because not only you are exposing or this picture that you're sending is not only being sent to the other person that, you know, they can see that you're sending that text to, but that person could take a screenshot of that and they can put it online and they can share it and it will be viral within minutes. So it's, it's really scary. You know, you have to really keep in mind what it is that you're putting out there, even if it's just a simple text to a friend. So, and, and that's staying on, online forever, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And this is one of the big things between teens. I mean, teens can find themselves sexting. Um, and, you know, parents, these are things that you need to, you know, you need to try to either talk to your children or just kind of be alert that it could happen, especially when they become teens. You know, they could do it for, you know, attention. They could do it to a boyfriend or because they like a boy and they want to go ahead and send him something cute, you know, that they feel that will attract the boy to them, peer pressure as well. It's no different than the, you know, the issues that they have at school, you know, with, with girls, you know, the attention that they want to have, you know, attract boys and everything like that. So. So do you think people today, they are desensitized to all these different uh, things they see on the website? I think so. I think so, definitely. Um, I mean, when it comes to social media, I mean, the possibilities of being able to just expose everything, everything that you have or everything that you know or putting information out there for everyone to see, it's, it's a scary thing. Uh, let's talk about some of the consequence and concern for the parents. Can you tell me some of that? Um, yeah. Um, as a mother of teenagers myself, um, I was from a, my, child, my children being 13 years old, I mean, they wanted to have, you know, because all the kids were doing it. They wanted to have an Instagram. They wanted, pressure, right? Absolutely. They wanted to have an Instagram. They wanted to have a Facebook. Um, for, for me personally, it was just um, with everything else when you have a teenager, it's this compromise. Okay, you want to have an Instagram account. I want access to that account. You know, I want you to link that account to my email or perhaps follow me or I'll, let me follow you so that I can see what you're posting so that I can see who you're in, in, interacting with. Um, it's, it's, it's important for a parent to take, you know, this just like you would um, when your, your, your children are at school and, you know, they want to do certain things. It's just kind of take that initiative to get involved and make sure they do, they're doing it safely. Well, uh, for those parents that uh, they don't know, here's another statistics. There is nine out of 10 teenagers that, you know, that post photo of themselves. And nine out of 10 provide the real name or the addresses where they live. And also eight out of 10 reveal their birthdays. And seven out of 10 teenagers, they provide the information where school they go to and where grade they in. What is the dangers about providing all this information? It, it is dangerous. I mean, it's, it's no different than pretty much just handing someone, you know, your birth certificate if you think about it, you know. Um, but you have, you as a user, you have the responsibility of what people are allowed to see. Um, you know, when you go to your Facebook, you can actually click what things you want shown on your profile. I mean, you can click on someone's Facebook and you can just see their picture. You can't see nothing else on their page because they went through their settings thoroughly and they were able to click on exactly what they wanted exposed to anyone that finds them. My personal account um, that I have, not my business, but my personal account, you can't find me on Facebook unless you're friends of my friends. You can't find me through my email, you can't find me through my name. That's the way that I wanted my page, my personal page. So there's a lot of uh, policies and there's a lot of um, guidelines in place that can help you stay protected. Well, that's it. That's great, because I didn't know that's something that I learned today <laughs> that makes sure I go through all the setting and I make sure that I get myself away from people researching me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> so uh, if I want to protect my child, and I know that person, my child is you know, 13 years old, the regulations say, you know, after 13, uh, you can go ahead and, and, and try to set an account with the parent permission, uh, how can I monitor that my kids are using this internet at home and I probably don't even know about it? 
Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's unfortunate. You can't find everything that your 13-year-old is doing. Um, you can only do your best to make sure that they don't have access to that, um, or if they don't have a page um, that they tell you, and, and hopefully they will tell you that they have a page, but it doesn't mean that, you know, you can do so much as a parent. I mean, they can use a computer at their friend's house and have a Facebook account that you will never know about or an Instagram account that you will never find. Um, I personally, as a parent, I made sure that I spoke to my girls about the dangers of having these pages and um, the dangers that they were putting themselves and, and their home and their friends if, if they were sharing things they weren't supposed to, if they were sharing every single location, if they were um, allowing people to see all this information about them. I'm here, you know, I'm over there, she's over <laughs> here. I mean, it's, it, it comes with big responsibility. I, I think the best thing that I, you can tell a teen is with a social media page, is like getting your first driver, driver's permit. A lot of responsibility. Um, you need to make sure that you treat it that way. You need to make sure that everything that you do, everything that you say, everything that you share, you think about it and you make sure that you're doing it responsibly. So, so. there's got to be some kind of communication there and agreement be. between you and mm -hmm. your kids. Absolutely. Well, Carmen, I want to say thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to bring uh, a message to you. And uh, we're going to continue talking story after this wonderful message. I'm going to the game and it's going to be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today because I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you want to be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. Welcome back to Hispani Hawaii. We're here with Carmen Bell talking story and learning about social media, the good, the bad, and how we can protect our kids. All right, so uh, we was talking about uh, what parents can do, you know, to protect their children using the internet. So can you elaborate a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think the, the internet is a great resource um, for the children. It's very educational. Um, it could really help them, um, you know, showcase any kind of talent that they have, any, you know, in an artistic way. They can, you know, find friends with common interests. Also, stay connected to family members. Um, I mean, we live in an island right now. A lot yes. of our family members are in the mainland. It's a perfect way to stay connected. I really don't want people to feel like with everything that's going on in the Internet that be afraid to use all these tools, to use all these resources. Um, steps that I would give the parents as far as to make sure that at least the kids stay protected or they can protect their children. Because a lot of parents, they have uh, pages for their children because they want their grandparents to see them growing up. Um, it's, and they monitor those pages. Um, the, the first thing that I would say is to go through all these different platforms, all these different places that you have these, um, these profiles, and go over and look through the settings and make sure how you can share exactly what you want to share. Um, Facebook has a, uh, uh, um, I'm sorry, a setting where you can see what your friends see and what the public sees when they click on your profile. I think that's great because it really allows you to see exactly what it is that you need to do to stay protected. Um, other um, uh, points that I would give to parents is um, tell their children not to allow or not to accept requests from people that they don't know, people that they've never met in person, uh, a friend that they've never met in school. Um, go to their profile. See if they're friends with your friend. Sometimes it's a cousin that you saw in passing or that you met at the mall and she just wants to be your friend. That's okay. But if it's someone that you go to and they're not friends with any of your friends, um, I'd say um, another red flag that I would say is someone that 
does not have a lot of followers or not a, a lot of friends or they have a fairly new account. That's a red flag for me and I, I, I speak to a lot of my clients about that. Um, they could be spam, um, they could you know, come and hurt your, your account or they can be predators. Um, something else that I would say is um, sometimes kids, being kids, very innocent, they um, would say something that can hurt someone's feelings or not knowing perhaps they can become the bully, you know? So I, I always say, make sure you are mindful of what you say to others online. If you don't want someone to say it to you, don't say it to somewhere else online, you know? That's a good point. Absolutely. Um, so that's, that's another point. A friend of mine told me uh, when you do something on the internet, on the website, just to think about it, what your grandmother would say. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> I think that would be a perfect way to look at it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if your grandmother say, hey, that's not the right thing to do, just don't do it, right? Yeah, not, grandma's no best. If that's not <laughs> the right no thing better. to do, for sure. <laughs> well, I want to ask you about some of the um, uh, application that is out there when kids are playing game in the computer and they have to provide the, the address and their location. Some of the application can tell you your sat location. How can you avoid that? Well, um, the only way that that can happen is if you have your setting on your phone or your computer where your location is on on that particular setting. If you look, for parents, if you look through your, the phone of your kid um, and you see that they're sharing their location under their Facebook application, turn it off. They won't be able to find them. If they're doing it through their Twitter, turn it off. Or, you know, that's the perfect way for no one to locate them. They won't be able to locate them if their location setting is not on on their, on their device. So um, that'll be a good something to look into for sure. And let's talk about YouTube. Uh, I see a lot of kids in YouTube, you know, they participate in or, or the mother or the father using the kids in YouTube to create a channel. Uh, what is your recommendation for parents that wanted to do that? Oh, absolutely. I would say be that person that monitors that account. You know, as a parent, it's no different than protecting them at home or protecting them, you know, at the park. Protect them online. Um, make sure that um, you monitor the people that send the messages. Um, you monitor the comments that they receive. And if it becomes too much, you know, you're a parent, and I'm sure, let's say you're managing your child's, you know, your children's accounts or your children's business, or um, if, you know, your child is a, a model or something and you're managing their career, um, hire someone. Hire someone that will take the responsibility to go in and you know go through these messages and make sure that your child is protected and make sure that none of their information, their pictures are not being copied and exposed on another different website. That is their job. That's what you will be paying them to do. So, so what is your recommendation building trust between yourself and your children in order for them to, okay, I'm going to trust my mom or my dad to look at my my website or looking at you know the different pages that I'm visiting uh, any recommendation on that um it it all depends on the parent how it is addressed and it all depends on, on on the child how it is received um my personal experience with my teens um it was pretty much being very open um in, in my mind um if they want to have a profile then they want to you know start becoming adults you know they want to take that responsibility so okay be very open and be like, this could happen. You could be contacted by a predator. You could be contacted by a guy that is not really that guy. Um, you know, just be very open with them. And if they're a lot younger, monitor their account for them, you know, and until they're of age. And then you can just, you know, tell them a little bit more. Um, but it's no different than anything else that you try to do with your kid, you know, and uh, try to tell them, you know, how to use it responsibly or how to build that trust. Um, you know, like I said, just, just make sure you tell them the, the do's and don'ts and the consequences. Uh, you also work with many different organizations here in Hawaii. Um, and some of these organizations, they have uh, to deal with kids and parents and, and they do marketing for, you know, for the community. Uh, what advice do you give to any one of these organizations that deal with those kids and are marketing kids within the community? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for starters, I wouldn't want them to feel discouraged with everything that is going on in the social media because it's really important. If, if, if there's children that are part of your organization, it's, people would want to see that. People want to see that the kids are getting involved in their community. Um, 
what I would tell them is to always make sure that they have the parents' permission with everything that they do that you know has to do with minors. Make sure that the parents are aware that they're using their picture or that the parents are aware that they're using their story. Always make sure that the parents are giving you some kind, some kind of permission, it's preferably written, <laughs> <laughs> that you're using um, this, these pictures and, and that you're promoting um, something that has to do or they're using your, your children's information. So. Uh, let's go back to cyberbullying. If my child feel like if somebody is harassing or is, is bullying my child, how can that child stop that? You just just block that person completely or, or approach him in a different way by you know calling the police uh, what, what would it be the first step um the immediate and the, the quickest step would be blocking that person you don't you know you tell your your child i'm sorry you know don't get exposed don't expose yourself i'm sorry to this kind of bullying block this person this person obviously doesn't have your best interest in mind um the next step if it continues um do your research is it a classmate is it a neighbor um, perhaps come and address with the school or address with the other pa with the parents. Um, if it's someone that you've never met, if it's someone that your kid accidentally befriended online, then that's when I would say contact the authorities so they can do a thorough investigation. And let me ask you, this is uh, your opinion. Do you think the school should provide some kind of curriculums or class to teach about kids using the internet? I think that would be amazing. If the, if, the, if the school could do that, I think that would be great because it's such a big tool that schools use it. You know, you can protect your kid at home, online, but what if they're using a the computer at school? So it's, I think it would be important for the school, and it would be great if the school could provide that kind of um, information or, or, or that kind of add that to their curriculum, that's for sure. All right, we're running out of time. I want to say thank you so much for coming to Hispanic Hawaii and helping uh, the Latin community to understand, you know, social media, the good, the bad, and how we can protect our kids. Any final thoughts? Thank you so much for having me, Richard, and uh, Happy New Year. Oh, Happy New Year to you. <laughs> Feliz Año Nuevo. Feliz Año Nuevo. <laughs> All right, I want to say thank you so much for watching Hispanic Hawaii, and don't forget that you can rewatch this program at thinktechhawaii.com and many other programs within our community. Thank you. Gracias. Hasta luego. Aloha.